Thanks so much for staying with us for this latest edition of The Broadway Show. So glad you're here. Julianne Huff is back in the spotlight. The two-time Dancing with the Stars pro champ is showing off her comedy chops in POTUS. Paul's here now with the story. Thanks, Tamsin. POTUS marks Julianne Huff's Broadway debut. We sat down at the Civilian Hotel to talk about her love of the stage and the part she's playing on Broadway's Biggest Night. This play is so funny. I mean, <laughs> stupid funny. In, in, the, in, the, in, the, in that's the highest compliment from me. And this cast, you and these six other women, you are just like 150% in. What was it like capturing that in the rehearsal room? I mean, I don't know if you did, did you know any of those women No, before? this was the first time meeting them, yeah. um, working with them, and this is the first time I've ever been a part of a project that is basically 99.999% female-led with yeah. the entire creative team, the producing team, the cast, the crew, everyone. And so it, it was a full, you know, shift of how to, the work environment was in general and then of course being in rehearsal yeah. we're just women hanging out and there's permission to be all parts of ourselves versus just the like let me show up and do my job but like let it all hang out literally and like that's what we've been doing and we've been having fun especially with comedy like there has to be a level of safety of like sure. we're we're in this together so you can go there let's talk about Dusty yes. that is your, your onstage alter ego and poetess she man <laughs> she's a creation I mean how did you find her did you immediately click with her and was that did you immediately read that role was that the role that you were sort of yeah, yeah. that was the, that was the role that came to me um, when I got the script and um, you know the, the thing that I love so much about Dusty is that she is different than the other women you know the other women are, are like in the thick of it they yeah. have been like grinding they are the ones that are like keeping the White House alive and Dusty comes in just so excited about life and being there and so there's this expectation that you think she might just be a little ditzy or yeah. you know not educated or because she's just bright-eyed and bushy-tailed ready for life and then she comes out with these lines where you're like oh she she knows what she's talking about and so there's a there's a little bit of an arc with her where you have an expectation and then you're you're floored by the end. You're like, oh, she's actually here to help. And I also just love that she's sex positive. She says what yeah. she wants. Everything that she says is just matter of fact. It's not like trying to get anything from it. She's just as confident in who she is. So you actually have a line in the show that is getting a completely different reaction now in the shadows of the Roe versus Wade news. And it's a completely different context. That line was so powerful even before this was happening um, in the world. And now after you know this poignant moment in, in our time, it's got a completely different context and meaning behind it. And that line is, I volunteer at a clinic back in Iowa, affordable, safe, reproductive health care is a basic a human right. Being up on stage when it happened for the first time, we were all like, whoa, overwhelmed <laughs> with emotion. Yeah. Like, it felt like it was five minutes that people were right, clapping, right, but right. it's probably 30 seconds, right, who knows? Yeah. And it really is a testament to any great playwright. Like, they, they just have their pulse on culture and know, like, maybe consciously or subconsciously that what they are doing is important and so there was like foresight of this line that was going to be so powerful. You know, I always ask um, actresses on Broadway who are playing Alphaba, usually mm -hmm. you can see a little bit of green on them <laughs> because they cover themselves in green, paint makeup every night. Um, and I'm, so I'm wondering, you're, okay, your tongue, tongue is totally... My tongue is not... actually okay, <laughs> yes. Because in the show, you, you sport a a blue tongue, yes. which ends which up becoming... Which reads from the second balcony of the oh, shoebox. Yeah. Blushies are my thing. Blue <laughs> raz slushy. <laughs> that's, right. you know, that's Dusty's whole spiel when she comes in. And by spiel, I mean she actually spiels. Right. So, um, actually last night, it became a splash zone on the front row um, yesterday. And so, I, you know, curtain call, I'm like looking at them being like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but they enjoyed it. It's a good flavor, so it's all good. So finally, you, we're going to see you on Tony Night with Darren yes, Chris. Yes. You're, you're hosting uh, Tony Awards Act One, yes, which is Act sort of like the, the first part of the Tony Awards on yeah. Paramount Plus. Yeah. Are you excited to do that? I'm so excited. I love Darren. Darren and I have been friends for years. I think we're going to try to maybe write something for a little opening. Cool. You know, I'm not sure. Well, we're kind of like playing with that idea. It's really exciting to be, you know, Radio City with the, the best of the best who have, you know, dedicated their 
their time, their energy, their soul, their passion, blood, sweat, tears, you know, and it's like unparalleled. Like it's 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 a new moment and I get to be a part of that. And I, I again, I don't take that lightly.